Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. I come this morning with our church school lesson, lesson 14, May the 31st, 2020. Return to love and justice. Return to love and justice. Lesson scripture, Hosea 11 and 12. Our focus scripture is Hosea 11, 1 and 2, 7 and 10, 12, 1 and 2, and 6 through 14. I greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Evangelist Leroy Pearson of Greater St. Paul AME Church, where our pastor is the Dr. Reverend Toby H. Pollock. And we come this morning to the church school lesson, and we're dealing with return to love and justice. And we're dealing with Hosea. And we have to understand who Hosea was. Hosea was a prophet whom Nahum means Savior or Deliverance. And when you look at Hosea and what Hosea went through in his life, and God used him in a mighty way to bring words of encouragement to his people, to let them know, to turn away from the injustice and turn back to justice, because through it all, God loves them. And Hosea married a woman that was unfaithful to him, and we wonder why would God use a man like that, but come to understand God uses who you want to use, but he had a special reason for using him because he wanted him to understand that family matters more than anything else. The love for us that God has for us, even when we do wrong, even when we don't do the things that he commands us, he still loves us. When he sent his people in the, the Israels into captivity, he still loved them. He still took care of them. Even though they continued to worship out of God, God still provided for them. And as we get into this lesson today to see what thus says the Lord, and just to understand what God commands of us, return to love and justice. And when we look at that key verb, hold fast to love and justice and wait continuously for your God, Hosea 12 and 6, NRSV. Hosea 11, 1 and 2, 7 through 10, 12, 1 and 2, 6 through 14, NRSV. And you will find these words in. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. The more I called them, the more they wanted want from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baalim and offering incense to idols. Mm. My people are bent on turning away from me to the most high they call, but he does not raise them up at all. How can I give you up, Ephraim? Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Amen. How can I treat you like Zimbabwe? My heart recalls within me. My compassion grows warmly and tender. I will not execute my faintest anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim, for I am God and no modern, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come in raster. They shall go after the Lord, who rolls like rolls like a lion. When the roar, his children shall come trembling from the west. 12, 1 and 2, 6 through 14. Ephraim heard the wind and pursued the east wind all day long. They multiply falsehood and violence. They make it treacherous with Assyria, and all is carried into Egypt. The Lord has indictment against Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways and repay him according to his deeds. But as for you, return to your God. Hold fast to love and justice and wait contentiously for your God. 
a trillion in whom hands are falsely balanced, he loves to oppress. Ephraim has said, Ah, I am rich, I have gained wealth for myself. In all my grains of offering has been found in me that would be sin. I am the Lord your God from the land of Egypt. I will make you live in tents again, as in the days of the old, of the appointed festival. I spoke to the prophet. It was I who multiplied vision, and through the prophet I will bring destruction. In Galilee, in Galilee, there is inquired. There shall surely come to nothing. In Gadalak, in Gadagal, they sacrifice bulls, so they off on sacrifice bulls, so their altar shall be like stone heaves on the furrows of the field. Jacob fled to the land of Ammon. There Israel served for a wife. And for a wife he guarded sheep. By a prophet the Lord brought Israel up from Egypt, and by a prophet he was guarded. Ephraim was given bitter offense, so his Lord will be bring his crime down on him and pay him back for his insult. And when we look at this, how God is telling Hosea. To go talk to his people and to let his people know they're doing wrong. Turn away from their wicked ways. And he's treating them like children. Like his children. How parents discipline their children. And as we get into the introduction and Bible study of this lesson here, just to understand what God is really saying to his people, how he is really encouraging us to do the right thing. Introduction. One Bible scholar said of Hosea 11 that it, that in it, we penetrate deep into the heart and mind of God than anywhere in the Old Testament. In this passage, the prophet used the parents-children relationship. Imagine to highlight the relationship between God and God's people. In the infant year, the child is helpless and fully depends on the case of the parent. And that's how we are when we first accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. We depend on him to grow us. We can't grow ourselves. A good parent feeds, clothes, and protect their children. In return, the children respect, honor, and obey the parents. Generally, when the child follows the guidance of the parents, life goes well. When a child with limited knowledge and understanding disobey and give in to impulse, life gets more difficult. Sometimes parents have to discipline their children. The correction measure may be made or mild or severe, but the good parent always applies the rod of correction in love. Cause we always think about when our parents disciplined us growing up. He said it's gonna hurt me worse than it hurt you. And understanding we have children now and we still have compassion, but we cannot spare the rod. We still have to punish them. And let them know when they're doing wrong. We allow more now than kids get away with things that we never got away with in our lifetime growing up. And a lot of parents say, I don't want to raise my children like I've been raised. There's nothing wrong with me. I thank God each and every day for the way my parents raised me. That will make me the man that I am today. Amen. This story of the relationship between God and the Israelite had all their elements. When Israel was small and helpless, God cared for, cared for the nation and guided it from a harsh life in Egypt to a blessed land. He got them out of Egypt. He brought them out. And even though they continued to turn it back on God, but God continued to love them. When Israel thought it had become of age, it rebelled and fell into idolatry and injustice. God, out of love and justice, had to call Israel to account. Even in the times of judgment, God's love for Israel always shone brightly. 
telling the Bible story. The importance of the book of Hosea is reflected in its new, in its many New Testament cross references. For example, Hosea 11 and 1 mirrors Matthew 2 and 15. Also in Hosea 12 and 8, we see how prospect can lure people into dangerous self delusional, which ends in idolatry. The same thought is found at Revelation 3 and 17. In the story of the prophet, at the prompt prom of God, note that when Israel was in a helpless state, God loved and cared for the nation. But when the nation grew strong and prospered, it forgot God and aligned with idolatry and worship. Still because of the God unfalling love, unfailing love, and God promised to the nation ancestor, God stuck, stuck with Israel. God led to shield Israel when they, when that was needed. However, the nation was ungrateful and did not show the respect and worship due to their eternal father. When Israel found itself under threat by its enemy, it again insulted God. Rather than look to the ever faithful God, the Israel looked for security in frail human alliance. As we do today, we're looking for help from man, but man can't help us. Our help comes from God. We keep our hopes and trust in God that he would never fail or leave us. It seemed like all God did for the people was not enough to gain their respect and loyalty. So God had to act to show the nation the level of evil in it. God was about to cherish the nation, chastise the nation. The correction was not designed to destroy the nation. Ultimate, it will pull the nation back to God. Oh, how God lamented the lie, deception, and injustice that ran rampant through Israel. As a footnote, it was noted that the Israel sister Judah was no different. Both were drinking milk from idols. And we look at this passage, what's going on today in the world. The, all the injustice, all the things that is happening now. And a lot of us still asking, where is God? God is still ranging over this throne. God is still in control. God is uncovering all the injustice that's going on in this world. In the passage, we can see that God was really hurt by Israel and Judah's ungodly behavior. This was especially so because they had an example to follow in the father Jacob. He already gave us the guidelines of what to follow and what to do. Because we should read it each and every day and every chance we get, we should be in God's word. And God, how do you want us to go about this day? What do you want us to do? How do you want us to handle ourselves? They should have used Jacob experience to keep on track and gain favor from God. The same what Jacob did. Again, because of God's deep love for Jacob's children. God pleaded for the nation of Israel and Judah to return to a proper relationship with God. God was calling them away from widespread false, corrupt, and delusional, which follow along them. Israel and Judah obviously did not learn from the punishment which God has served in the past to the people who had turned their backs on God. And when we really look at it, what God is doing here in Hosea, he is setting the stage for his son to come into this world. He is letting these people know, y'all are my chosen people, that I depend on to keep righteousness, keep peace. They do the things that I have commanded you. When I brought you out of Egypt, I brought you out and I kept you and I love you and I sent you in captivity because I love you and wanted you to do right. But you continue to do the thing that pleases you, not me. And he said, my son got to come through this bloodline. And if they come through a corrupt and evil bloodline, how are the people going to really and truly look at my son? How are they going to treat him? And you see how they treated him. You see how they treated how Jesus, they beat him, they whipped him, spit on him, hung him on an old rugged cross. But through the midst of it all, God still loved us because he gave us his only begotten son. 
So we need to hold on to God on changing hand. We need to love justly. We need to love righteousness. We need to continue to look to God for all our help, all our guidance, all our understanding. Because we cannot do this alone. And as I close this church school lesson this morning, with a closing prayer. Dear Father, we recognize that all we have is worthless unless we have you. And with you, we lack nothing. So we thank God this morning for all that he has done and he continues to do in our life. Continue to seek God's faith in each and everything. And if you don't know God in the pardon of your sins, repeat after me. Say, Lord, come into my life. Save me. I can't do this alone. And he will come in and he will save you. We thank you. We love you. And have a blessed week. Amen.